Welcome to Operation Healing Heroes. Join me in Virginia Beach, Virginia, as we feature retired U.S. Navy veteran, John Fleming. They served for us. They sacrificed for us. Their stories deserve to be told. Every military veteran has a story to tell. Join our host, Jay Garstecki, as we honor the stories of our true American heroes, one soldier at a time. The mission today is Operation Healing Heroes. Brought to you by Great Clips. Operation Healing Heroes traveled to Virginia Beach, Virginia to connect with U.S. Navy veteran John Fleming. We're here to shine the light on the effects of traumatic brain injury, treatment, and healing of our hero, and to do a little fishing. So what led you into the military? What led me in was the deciding factor was basically tough weekend with my parents at home and a tough week at work. I guess getting yelled at for doing your job the correct way is not something I want to uh, continue to do week in and week out. And tension at home, but when I was 23, it was just one of those things that it was, it was a spur of the moment. I finished work, I went to the recruiter that day, went in, talked to them, signed up, and my parents came home that evening, and I remember telling them, told my dad, hey, uh, can you have a seat? And then I told them, and when my mom came home and I told her, yeah, she was not a happy camper. Oh, huh? Yeah. So when you went in, what, what did you enlist for? What were you looking to go do? They offered SEAL, SWIC, and EOD um, in boot camp. And honestly, EOD was the only thing that really drew me. Really? Yeah. The difference between Navy EOD and the other services is that if there's ordnance in the water, that's where the Navy goes. And they came to me and they're like, all right, John, you're going to dive school. Dive school? So you start out with dive school because of the, uh, if you can't pass dive school, you can't go to EOD school. So graduating dive school in uh, Panama City, Florida, and then moved to Eglin Air Force Base, and that's where EOD school is located. John would deploy twice in less than a year, and the second invasion of Fallujah would change his life. We trained for about a day or two with a small craft company to get ready to have boats in water. And uh, November 10th, we had boats in water ready to go to Fallujah. So at this point, I had this mindset of, if it's my time, it's my time. There's nothing I can do about it. And it kind of, it put me at ease. I didn't care. I knew whatever was going to happen was going to happen. And sure enough, another barrage of uh, bullets come through. Hit the boat. And I feel this pain in my side right here. It's a blunt hit right on my hip. Something came from behind me, ricocheted off the boat, hit me in the side, and I hunch over in pain. And everybody on the craft thought I was joking around. And I looked down at my holster, and on the front of the holster was a magazine pouch, and right there was a, a bullet. And this is what hit me in the side. Everybody on the craft wanted to see it. I'm like, nope, this is staying with me. And every deployment I went on after that was pretty much, that came with me. You brought that bullet with you, you I had it. I brought that bullet with me, and it was, I would say, my good luck charm, but. Um, said it wasn't your time, man. It wasn't, it wasn't my wasn't time. time. Operation Healing Heroes is brought to you by Great Clips, the Yance Valor Foundation, and by the Al Lynch Foundation.
Operation Healing Heroes is a nonprofit organization dedicated to documenting the lives of our U.S. military veterans. In addition, we also provide financial support and treatment for post-traumatic stress. Your donation will help heal our heroes. The very next day, after being hit by a ricocheted bullet on his boat, John volunteered for another mission. I thought that we were taking a boat out to meet up with him, but it was, uh, we were actually convoying out. We thought we were taking the boats back out. When we met up with the Marines for our brief, we found out we were getting on a convoy to go down Route Michigan. Route Michigan at that point was a bad place to be. People were being ambushed there left and right. The, uh, the, the captain that was escorting us out, he said, uh, he's like, we're gonna put you in the biggest vehicle. And unbeknownst to us, the biggest vehicle was the lead vehicle. <laughs> so it was, uh, it, was a, it was basically a troop transport, um, one of the 15 ton with uh, bench seating in the back. That only had armor down the sides. Basically, uh, seats that you sat back to back on. And off we went. We left the base and immediately stopped outside the base. We had um, air cover that needed to refuel. When the air cover refueled, we were shifting around in the back of the truck. I was sitting all, all the way forward on the um, passenger side. And I took my weapon off took the sling off. But then we started moving again. We got on around Michigan and we're driving, we're cruising along pretty good. And then we just stopped dead in the middle of the road. Which for me, I was thinking that now we're sitting ducks for whatever, for anybody to do whatever they want to us. What I didn't know what's happening is there was a, there was a barricade, they barricaded the road in front of us. And uh, then the vehicle just took off. And everybody in the truck, in the back of the truck, started shooting from both sides. I had no idea what they were shooting at. I clearly remember looking to my right, my eyes confirming what my ears are hearing. And as I'm bringing my head back, as soon as I got back to center, it was like slow motion. Time stopped. It was like slow motion. The vehicle then hit the barricade went up and over onto uh, the driver's side. I could feel myself going through the air. My next memory after that was laying on my back. And I grabbed for my gun, which was still around my arm, but the sling was not around me. It was still under, it was stuck underneath the vehicle. And I think that if it was still slung to me, it would have pinned me underneath the vehicle. So I remember pulling out my gun trying to stand up, and I felt excruciating pain in my left leg, and it was hard to stand. Ultimately, we ha what happened there was I ended up breaking my fibula. So 11 days in country, November, uh, November 10th or uh, the 11th, sometime in the middle of the night, the, uh, my life got real. Operation Healing Heroes is brought to you by Recon Boats, Thorn Brothers, and by FVP. Nice. Yeah, right? I did the hard part, right? We're on it in. If you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage, follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're a US military veteran in Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, or beautiful sunny Florida, log on to our website, takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. John's troop transport vehicle hit a barricade, went airborne, and landed on its side. QRF came in, quick response force, and they, um, they put me in the back of a uh, transport, 
and I remember fading in and out of consciousness. And I thought it was because we were in a 12 hour time shift. I didn't get a chance to adjust. Yeah. And thinking back to it now, I mean, it had to have been the way I landed. And that's when, um, that's when I think I got my, my first TBI in, in the military. At this point in time, I didn't even know what a TBI was. One year later is when I was back out the door again. This time I was uh, operating with SEAL Team 3. After that deployment, there was an investigation. So NCIS had to uh, ask a question around. So I was called in for an interview. Just simple questions. But they were asking simple questions about guys' names and things I've witnessed. And I couldn't tell you what the guys' names were. I knew who they were talking about. Yeah. Now, these are guys I was deployed with for six months. These are guys that I trained up with. Couldn't remember their, couldn't remember their names a month after. And I had no way of explaining why I couldn't remember who they were. But I remember them saying to me, they were like, you were with these guys this entire deployment. You don't remember their names? I'm like, I, I don't know how to explain it. That's the one thing that they didn't have for us. They never had a baseline. So you don't know what normal is because nobody ever recorded it. We're now 13 years into my career. Right before I came down here, I found out I picked up senior chief petty officer. I was undermanned, under-equipped, and I couldn't function. And again, I didn't know why. To the point where the command thought that it was more of a dereliction of duty. And they came after me. Ultimately, that cost me that rank. They ended up taking that rank from me. Really? Instead of trying to help me, they actually removed my, my star and took my senior chief away from me. And that was, that was a hard, that was a hard thing to uh, process. Imagine. I mean, there's days when I still think, think about it. I remember walking in with my, uh, the command master chief and he's like, what's going on? I had no explanation because I didn't know. And I was put on uh, limited duty removed from the command. My sense of worth was gone as well. I spent 16 years in the Navy. And yeah, that's how I finished it. I was medically retired after 16 years and some change. Actually, I had one doc say, um, oh, you're just depressed. <laughs> right now, I'm in a much better place. Have you been able to get some help? Um, yeah, I've, well, <laughs> Doc C has been a huge help for me. Hey, John. Hi. How are you doing today? Doing well. Awesome. So the first time I met John Fleming, he came to me, and I think it was about 2019, so it was a number of years after his injury, but he was not thriving in any way. And his life just wasn't on a trajectory in which he had enjoyed. Not only that, he was in severe pain all the time, all day long. He had no reprieve from the pain that he experienced. She is, uh, she's been a huge help, physically, mentally. She's helping out so much. It was pain down his legs, it was pain in his back, it was pain up his back, it was pain in his head. He had been getting lots and lots of Botox for these unrelenting migraines, and that's how he was being treated. And what was wild is the Botox didn't help. Nothing helped him at all. And we started working, and I started paying attention to his body, and I did the applied kinesiology testing, the advanced diagnostics, to determine exactly what he needed and what I could focus on. Little by little, I focused on the things that were most important to his body at that time, and he got better and better and better, and he changed. He's a changed man. The 
EOD Warrior Foundation serves the EOD community by providing financial assistance and support to active duty, reserve, National Guard, retired and veteran EOD technicians and their families. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you've seen in one of our episodes or nominate a veteran to be featured in a future episode, log on to our website, operationhealingheroes.org. Operation Healing Heroes is brought to you by Recon Boats, XL Automotive, and by Temple Bay Lodge. There is a stigma out there. When people see you going to get treatment, they think you're broken. I'd say to other veterans, I'd say to other active duty members, go, go get help. Absolutely. This is just a job. Your family, yourself, it's more important. Way more important. So John first came in 2019, so we're at four years now. She's done magic for me. So hearing in the left ear sends a signal over to the right side of the brain. So we're looking at something going on on the right side. We don't know what yet though. I don't know where I'd be right now if I didn't start coming here. He is lighter would be the best thing to say is that John is now lighter than he ever was before. People come to me with everything from uh, Morgellons, which is a specific Lyme disease. They come with um, seizures, neuropathy, PTSD, childhood trauma, you know, and it's nice that people start living their best lives and the life that they were meant to have. So when we were trying to get a rank back, um, I was approached by the newspaper to have an article done. After the uh, article was published, there was the, uh, another command was doing this to one of their people. And the, uh, somebody from their medical department read the article, took it to the chain of command. They realized what was going on with this guy and got him help. So when I heard about that, that, that was a real good feeling. That is a good feeling, because you know you uh, just helped somebody else. My job is to help other people. Right, that's a great feeling. So even before I got out, some of the junior guys that, uh, that I worked with, I'd pull them aside and tell them exactly what happened to me, tell them signs and symptoms to look at. So I was talking to guys about it all the time. I'm like, hey, look for, look for those differences in your people. If you start seeing a difference, start asking questions. Special warfare is a macho command. There's women in, in there too, but it's there's there's a, a hierarchy. They they don't want to be broken. Nobody wants to be broken. They'll hide it and hide it and hide it until they break completely. So I'd say to other veterans, go out and get help. It's just go talk to somebody. It. Uh, I've lost a few friends to suicide. That they just. Some got help, but some couldn't handle it. And it's horrible. Uh, it's a horrible feeling. It's horrible. Yeah, that is definitely not a thing that anybody should ever think about. As bad as it is, you just, you multi that pain is then multiplied amongst everybody that's left behind. Yeah. But I was able to get help after the military. I think it's our duty to just let everybody know that there's there is help out there, you know, and help comes in different forms and shapes and sizes, but there's there's help out there, you know, so. Yeah. If I were to do this all over again, I would. If I could have the foresight that I could pick up on what was going wrong, that would be nice, but. That's not doing it all over again. Doing it all over again would be walking in blind like I walked in the first time. Where I've been, I've been all over. I've been to Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, Egypt. And 
I do believe that this, the U.S., is, of all places, the best place. Well, I just want to say thank you for your service to our country and got a couple gifts here for you that we'd like to give you. This is a jersey from Operation Healing Heroes with your name, John Fleming, on it. And Fleming Amazing. on the back there. That's for you. And I'd like to give you a, a rod that we made, a St. Croix rod that in honor of your sacrifice and service, it's got all the branches of service there in Operation Healing Heroes Foundation logo. And I just want to say thank you for thank the you. sacrifices that you made for I our freedom. Please understand they don't go unnoticed and, and we appreciate you and your family for everything you did to keep us free. Thank you, thank you very much, that means a lot. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you've seen in one of our episodes or nominate a veteran to be featured in a future episode, log on to our website, operationhealingheroes.org and click on the nominate button.